Hello everybody, good morning. Carla Nicole live. Um, beautiful Sunday again. Um, I have been quite busy, so please excuse me, I'm a little out of sorts today. But um, let me tell you, I've had a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Um, you know, uh, a lot of you may not know, but I do body work, so um, my last, at least my last three days has been full of me doing body work and and really um, working bodies and, and allowing people to let me be a part of their life. And, and it's, it's humbling. So, um, you know, I'm truly, truly enjoying doing what I'm doing. So, you know, again, being a vessel or a, in the spiritual realm and assisting and helping and sharing um, my works and, and myself is always something that, that I'm so thankful to do and happy to do. So, um, yeah, just a little out of sorts. I've been in Kentucky, then Columbus, now he, I mean, I just been everywhere. So I just been all over the place. So like I said, a little out of sorts, but we're going to get this together. Um, so everybody welcome. Hey Mookie, Rick, SP, good seeing you, Sammy. Much love to my sister, Sandra, Jay Neri. So glad to see you guys. Um, I hope you guys are all having a beautiful Sunday. It's a little dreary, kind of humid a little bit, but hey, we're going to make this work anyway, right? So let's get started. Um, first of all, whoever has never been to this show, I want to welcome you. I'm Carla Nicole. Um, this is my live show. I have every Sunday, 12 noon, and it is called um, The Forgiveness Series. And um, today's show is about, you know, once we forgive somebody, then what? <laughs> Right. So I want to talk about that because I get people that throw it in to the, you know, throw it into my inbox. Oh, inbox like, hey, um, what's going on? Like, you know, I've forgiven somebody, but now I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, necessarily where I should go from here. So I want to talk about that. So first of all, I'm Carla Nicole. I'm a single mother of two children. I have a daughter that is 19 and a son that is 10. And my spiritual mission is to make sure that um, I encourage everybody to live the best life while they're here, while we are on the planet, while we have life and breath in this, in this soul. Um, let's make sure that we are um, living our life to the fullest and being in our best person while we're here. So let's get started I want to talk about this because I keep getting inboxes so when I get a lot of inboxes I feel like okay this is something I need to discuss and this is something I need to address because people are like you know okay you know I had a situation where somebody ticked me off somebody disappointed me somebody hurt me somebody um, you know did something undeniable or unexplainable and I want to know that once I forgive them then what do I do and so I want to talk about two two things that you know we can come across when we're dealing with forgiveness so number one sometimes we can decide and this is really a spiritual de decision so I believe you need to meditate and you definitely need to go into your prayer time. You know, I talk a lot about prayer and I talk a lot about how important it is to meditate and listen to what God is telling you to do. Okay, so not just go off of your own decision, because sometimes our feelings or our emotions will drive our decision as to what we should do with someone once somebody hurts us or or. Um, <laughs> So I want you to think about this really fast. Sometimes we may have to disassociate with that person. But to me, disassociation can be in different, in different stages. You can disassociate from someone um, momentarily, temporarily, or permanently. You must decide in that decision now my thing is 
we have to look at it. And I don't know if you guys remember the first time I talked about forgiveness. I talked about offenses, okay? So offenses that go on in your life. Things happen, okay? There's different offenses. There's different things that come up. But I tried to help you guys to think about when something happens in your life or there's some kind of offense that goes on or goes awry in your life. You need to really compartmentalize it like you do in court. And how I explained it is some things are misdemeanors. Some things are felonies. Some things are first degree, second degree, third degree. So we need to think about, well, what stage, what level of offense did this really take in to my life? So if this is someone that is chronically, excuse me, chronically doing things, continually doing things to you or or causing so much havoc and immense pain in your life you've got to step back and say well now routinely i have noticed through our you know our association be a family I, I'm, and when i say association that doesn't just mean that is friendship that can mean friendship that can mean family that can mean work relationship that can mean any and every relationship that even means child relationships that you have with your kids what that means is if someone is in your life and they're causing havoc pain undeniable stress that you are having to deal with them because of something that they continually do habitually in other words they don't really have the time or take the time out for themselves to see wait a minute when I self-reflect and see what I'm doing, I don't care if I hurt other people. If you're talking about that type of person that really can care less if they're hurting you or whomever else they're hurting, they have no real remorse, no real care about how they're operating in life. They don't really give a darn how they, you know, mess your life up or hurt you. You have to step back and say, hold on a minute. This type of person or this type of vessel in my life, because of habitually them doing something over and over and over again, constantly causes me havoc. I'm constantly having to deal with their drama. I'm constantly having to clean up their mess. Or people are coming back and telling me that this person is this and this person is that. After a while, I got to stop and say, wait a minute. Your association with me is costing me a lot more than I'm willing to pay. And that means we have to be mindful that it is our human right to have peace in our life. I want y'all to think about that. Because a lot of times we don't really realize we are the commander in chief in our life. So we have a right, human right, to decide what is okay in our life and what is not okay in our life. So just like every day we lock our doors and make sure no criminal comes in and just takes over and causes havoc, we make sure we lock our doors every day at night. We make sure we lock our doors before we leave to go somewhere. We make sure we lock our car doors when we get in and out. We need to be locking the doors of how we allow people in and out of our life that are unhealthy, toxic people, and they exist. The hardest part for me to get was that these type of people exist. And so I have to be mindful. Okay, I have a certain I have a certain energy in my home. Okay? So in my home, I have to be mindful of who I let in and who is okay to be in my home. And there's a reason for that because I'm a commander in chief over my peace. So when I tell people sometimes we must Take over ourselves and say, no, you're not welcome here. And it is okay to say that. First of all, you have to allow yourself permission in your soul that it is okay to say you're not welcome here anymore. I'm not allowing this to, to, to just take over my life. You're in control of that. And a lot of times we believe we are recipients of the drama that comes in our life. Like, oh my God, stuff is coming into my life and I'm just allowing. Yeah. So you cannot allow just anything and anybody to come in your heart, in your mind, in your soul. So with that said, 
sometimes we have to sit back and we have to look at this person right here i cannot afford and since i cannot afford them i must permanently remove association now in the removal of association that does not mean that you have not forgiven them you have but after forgiving it's also looking at it from the perspective of hey your peace again is your human right to have and it is your right to say although i've forgiven you and i've forgiven this in this circumstance and other things that has happened in the past i believe it's better for us to just part ways no disrespect no ill feelings I wish you well. Matter of fact, I pray for your, your, your life to be, you know, beneficial and blossom. However, I must walk away and that's okay. I just want to give everybody understanding. It is okay to walk away from somebody that is not, um, healthy for your life and you have a right to do that. Okay. Now, remember I said, you can also disassociate momentarily, okay? So the momentary um, disassociation is fine. It's just very different. You're not, you're not disassociating with hatred or ill will feelings or, 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 or jealousy or anything to the degree of anger because if you're still in that headspace, you haven't forgiven. Forgiveness means I've let go and I've overlooked what happened. So why I say sometimes you must disassociate momentarily. Sometimes people take us for granted. See what I'm saying? And so when people take you for, when people take you for granted, you sometimes have to say, okay, it's better for me to disassociate for you just momentarily so I can, first of all, learn my boundaries, learn to, to understand that certain people cannot be in my space intimately. So you may have to redesign your association. So some people can be in your space all the time. You can conversate, you can be intimate. They can know inner, inner thoughts, your inner workings, what you got going on. But not everybody needs to be in that space. So you need to then when you are disassociated temporarily, you need to sit back and say, well, now in this means of temporary disassociation, I need to see how I place this person in my life. In my forgiveness, there is a love here and I still care about this person and I don't see them as a habitual person to that continues to just seek out to hurt me, nor do I see this person as someone that is uh, in, in that chronic state of just ill will and, and no care for other people, um, you know, doing what they're doing. Um, so I see them as having some type of heart and I believe that they have some, some regret and they, they do have a sense of, um, of uh, care about me and how I feel and they really want to make these, make this make this back right, make this get back to where it was. So with, with someone like that, um, like I said, sometimes you just need to give you, I just need some time and it's okay to tell that person that you need some time. Not to say I want to disassociate with you permanently. I just need some time to really, um, think about where I want our direction to be, where I want us to, what, what, what is my idealistic feeling about how you and I should interact or you and us should interact now because it's important that you know in your mind what you see as being something as sufficient and suffice you are a commander in chief over your friendships relationships familial relationships marital relationships work relationships you are in control of that so while you are in control you must be able to set the tone as to what is acceptable with the people that you are involved with. And like I said, some people don't need to be in your inner circle. Some people need to be 
in your circle to a degree, but yet they are only there as, you know, maybe a associate or someone that's just kind of cultivated here, but they're really not someone that's going to be all up in your business. Sometimes you have to replace people, place them in a different spot, place them in a different, in a different order. Okay. So when you place people in different orders, it's okay. And then when you reconnect with them, there's still a love, there's still an honor. You're not still holding over their head. All the stuff that happened in the past, you have actually let that go and forgave it. And so with doing that, you are now allowing them to come in your life, right? And you're allowing them to come in your life on a different plane, in a different way. There's now a new found joy with you in that new part, that new relationship. And now you're able to enjoy it because now it's not, oh, I had this issue with them and I didn't really fix it. I didn't really discuss it. I didn't really talk about it. But tell your person that you have forgiven. Look, I want us to change some things. And these are the things that I want to see us do different. And it could even be, you know, we argue too much or we disagree or how we argue or how we disagree to me brings on more stress than I'm willing to take on or it's bringing on more headache and havoc in our friendship and, our relationship. and I believe that we can do better by learning how to disagree and be okay with it you know sometimes we can agree to disagree because see when we forgive right when we learn to forgive some things and we learn to step back and say, okay, this was a this was something that I didn't care for, but I still love this person and I still want this person in my life. I just wanted to reconfigure and figure it all out in the meantime. Um, it changes the game. So this way it helps you to really reconfigure that relationship, really helps you to sit back and say, okay, now that we've got that oh, got over that hump. We can now redesign our relationship and you move in a better in a better way. I think a lot of times, you know, people believe that when I forgive somebody, I'm giving them permission to, to hurt me. I'm giving them permission to do uh, dishonorable things to me. And that's not true. When you are forgiving someone, you are saying, okay, I forgive what happened. So I'm not holding over your head any longer this offense that you did or that happened or whatever had chaotically went on in your life or it could be it could be you know years of just hurtful events that you are now saying I am no longer allowing those events to take over my peace in my life that's what forgiveness is because when you really sit down and you say hold on I am living in the memory of the pain of what that person did to me I'm going to say that again. I am living in the pain that that person had did to me by continually talking about it, continually thinking about it, continually gossiping about it. And then it's like, oh my God, oh, I'm so frustrated. You know, this person is doing this and, and he did that or she did this and she did that and I was so hurt da, 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 and you keep bringing energy in the offense and when you do that it's not it's not healthy number one and number two you're not able to move on from it so that is that issue that trauma that you felt from all that that happened to you is steadily pushed on your soul and you're not able to break free from the unforgiveness and so that's why you're finding yourself overly consumed with even bitterness, anger, hatred, jealousy of them, whatever it is comes from the unforgiveness. So this is why I'm telling you how you go about once you forgive, you can now see the next step of forgiveness. And in that next step, it doesn't mean that you're giving them permission. It just means that you're overlooking it. But now in the overlooking piece, you now have a right to be a commander in chief over your peace. Okay. So I'm hoping this is helping somebody because it's very important. A lot of times we don't really think about, well, I've forgiven them. But sometimes we say we forgive and then we're like, but have we? Because we're still bringing it up. 
We're still talking about it. We're still thinking about it. Why is that still harboring in the mind? What happened? If, if you forgave it, it should no longer be on the frontal lobe of your mind. Let it go. And then you can move on. And you can have a more fruitful, enjoyable life. Because you know what? The more you sit and harbor on that unforgiveness, the more it affects you. They done moved on and done what they've done and moved on with your life. But you are still struggling and harboring and holding on to that memory. Like with a death grip. Like why are you holding on to that? Let that go. Please. It's unhealthy for you. And once you do that, you'll, you'll be like, oh, I feel so much better. It, your whole soul will decompress and feel a sense of peace because you're no longer harboring in that hurt. And lastly, I said that I wanted to talk about um, forgiving something and, um, you know, temporarily, um, well, I said momentarily, but temporarily you decide, you know, um, I, I really have this desire to not really be around them because I'm really, I'm really frustrated by, by what I've gone through with them. But then... You know, when I talked about earlier how important it is to meditate and have your prayer time about it, sometimes we need to step outside of being the victim of the offense and learning how did this happen because sometimes I think when we wrong, we'll think, well, they did us wrong and how did they do it? But we never really sit down and think, well, maybe we need to have a little bit of compassion for this person. Maybe it's something about them that we, we're not looking at. You know, because I have, you know, some family members that um, are still harboring in, in hurt and anger about, you know, their parent. And their parent is passing on. But they're still holding on to the fact that she had, you know, she wasn't really engaging with her kids because she had a mental condition. But they've never sat back and said, well, maybe I need to be mindful of maybe the mental condition hindered her from being the best her. But they're just so bitter that they didn't receive what they wanted or how they wanted to receive it. So they just harbor in on, well, you know, I don't even want to address her as my mother because I'm still so angry. It's like, you never sat down and really looked at it from her perspective, have you? A lot of times we'll look at something and be frustrated and angry and hurt and, 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 um, and feel some type of way about something without really sitting back and thinking, hold on, if I place myself in their shoes... Or if I sit back and say, oh my God, this abuser to me, was that person abused? Because that person just pushed all this abuse all over me. I'm, a, I'm now a victim of someone abusing me. Sometimes we got to say, well, where did this come from? Not to justify it in any way, shape, or form, but sometimes we need to sit back and say, well, maybe this person is abusive because they were abused. Not to, not to justify it, but sometimes we got to get outside of being the victim and sit back and say, well, maybe let's look at that person with some compassion. When we look at someone through compassion, we sit back and we're saying, okay, hey, Angela, when we sit back and look at somebody that had been abused i know of many people and you know me i'm very big about um uh domestic violence I, i'm an advocate against it i don't care if it's male female whatever i may i mean i am hugely against domestic violence however <clears throat> i oftentimes ask the victim i'll say well hold on a minute was that person also abused we need to look at that. They look at me kind of funny. Well, now that you mention it, yes. It was learned behavior. Yes. Okay. 
I'm not telling you that that's a justification because everybody that has been abused does not become an abuser. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is have some compassion and understanding because number one, the way to break away from being a victim and basically you are now um, elevated to a survivor. The way that happens is the per the person that has been abused normally nine times out of 10 has some compassion for the, vi for the one that victimized them. That is the power of forgiveness. We can't always be perfect. We have made mistakes through the years ourselves. Not because necessarily we made mistakes because I can always say everybody else did this and I did it because I was in association with someone else and this and that. But remember, we're told very young, especially during teenage years, right? We're taught about peer pressure, environment, all of those things that we talk about, we talk about that a lot. Environment and, and, and peer pressure. Okay, with environment and peer pressure, a lot of times we sit back and we're looking like, oh, wait a minute. I can be affected by somebody else. I can make decisions because of the association I have. I can find myself oftentimes just so engulfed in something that I would probably have no engulfment or, or any desire to be engulfed in if I didn't have association with them. So yes, peer pressure can cause us to make poor decisions. Peer pressure can cause us to make some, some uh, decisions that are not beneficial to us in our life. So we have to be mindful. Okay, let me have some compassion for this person that did this to us. And then let me think about something for a minute. Can we sit back and focus on how to uplift ourselves out of victim mode and, and empower ourselves into becoming a survivor. Because once you do that, even when you're, you know, and we can be a survivor of someone's harboring something at us, whether they disappointed us, hurt us, made us angry, any of those things, there still has to be a means of forgiveness. So how do we do that? Well, they made me angry. Well, why did they make you angry? Well, because of this, this, and this. Okay. But where did they get that from? Maybe they got it from something that was unbeknownst to them. Or maybe they got it from association. We have to start having compassion for other people because we make mistakes. We're not perfect. None of us are. So we, you know, I just want people to sit back and think about how important it is. Hey, GR, I'm great, love. Thanks for asking. So it's very important that we sit back and we take, you know, honor to, um, Learning how to care about others. Learning how to self-reflect is very important. And self-reflection means we have to step, out, step out of ourselves and look at ourselves. I do it all the time. Some people think, my, oh, she's so analytical. Yes, I am. But I self-diagnose my mess because if I'm making a mess or I'm doing something that's not, you know, kosher, then I need to be checking myself. And I also have accountability partners. I have friends that will tell me, girl, you off. Mm -mm, that don't sound good. You need to change that. What you're doing there, you need to be changed on that. And I believe we all should have that. We all should have accountability partners that care about us, love us, and want to see the best for us. And will tell us, hey, mm -mm, you're off, ma. <laughs> you're off. You're off, my friend. You need to get off of that. Because it's important. It's very important. So I hope everybody got something from this today. Like I said, um, it, there's a power and knowing what is going on, but we have to understand that forgiveness is a beautiful thing, but it also takes practice and forgiveness doesn't happen overnight and allow yourself time. Some people can have someone murdered in their family and forgive them that moment. They have some just relentless forgiveness skills. Me, myself, and I, I, you know, I need the process. Give me some time. You know what I'm saying? Depending on the offense, depending on what happens, I need some time. But some people will just, I mean, in an instant, they will forgive an offense. And, and to me, that takes a lot of strength to be able to do that. 
So I hope, like I said, I hope you guys got this. Um, I will be back next Sunday and talking about forgiveness again. This is the forgiveness series. I'm loving this series. It is the most, one of my favorite because it is very, very, very powerful. Um, and it is, it's very joyful to have. And, and so I really want to see, um, people share this video so more people get the in information about how to practice forgiveness because it's not something that you just you just do you have to practice it so i want to take a look at what sammy said um sammy said that he's dealt with um with this kind of stuff over the last 10 years drama um a person having no remorse a one-way street relationship um vengeance and habitual directed har uh, pur purposeful harm drums and vengeance so he said it's so true that we decide how our life will be boundaries we have consequences of non-compliance he said we can put an end to being abused and used um, and he said when we do and, and what he said is when we do that massive changes and shifts take place very good Sammy and he's so right like I said, we do have the power. A lot of times we don't want to think about it or we don't want to acknowledge it, but we have more power than we lead, lead or even let ourselves on to know. And understand, like I said, you are the commander in chief of your life. So if you want peace, you have to be relentless in keeping it in your life. Drama and stuff, leave that at the front door. Don't welcome it. But if you do continue to welcome it, you're going to constantly have drama. But when you get to the point where you're like, I'm good, I'm not having this drama in my life, you don't. I don't have drama, I have peace, and I'm going to keep it that way. All right? And anybody that wants to come to the Resolve Call tonight, um, you can become a Wisdom Focus Group member today. It's just $9. I will let you know how to do that. Um, I will even put the link here in, in getting your payment in so you can be a part of that uh, Resolve Call. Kara is going to be... Um, our guest and she's wanting to save her marriage and you know anyone that wants to join that please let me know i would love to have you so again i appreciate you guys so much for being here i'm out of here you guys have a blessed and wonderful sunday it's carla nicole signing off best kept have a good day bye